What's up, guys? I am James Hake. It's 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. And it is Tuesday, October 26th, 2021 A.D. I'm wearing my Facts vs. Truth, The Hake Report t-shirt. Thank you, The Hake Report, for the t-shirt. TheHakeReport.com. Look for the Teespring link. It's in the menu. Uh, if you want to get a Facts versus Truth Hate Report t-shirt. Um, I have some things to share with you. I'm going to play some music for you, but not right now. I'll play the Hate Report theme song by Trevor Wesley. But now I'm doing it in the, at the uh, break and at the end. Ending a little bit early with the talking mess so that I can talk, talk to you guys. I'm cracking because I'm growing up. Uh, I'm going to be touching on Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick, Rittenhouse, the attack on children, the feminist attack on children, by the way, and other mess, as well as your calls. You can call in 888-775-3773. And they're still going after Kristen Cinema, the uh, Democrat who's acting like she's halfway reasonable. They hate anybody halfway reasonable. It's ridiculous. But anyway, guys. Let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hake Report, the Hake Report, la la la. Oh, it's the Hake Report, the Hake Report, la la la. Hey guys! So, how are you guys doing? I am fine. We have quite an interesting show, I think, for you guys to today. Um, I wanted to tell you about, first off, let me get right to it, Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick Rittenhouse. I'm going kind of fast because I have this long uh, article that I want to trudge through a little bit with you guys. I don't know. It's from The Guardian. It's from July of this year, or August. July or August. Talking about dads, fathers, on how to raise a feminist son or something like that. It's ridiculous. But Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick Rittenhouse, there was a big win according to uh, the Citizen Free Press. Citizen Free Press for Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick Rittenhouse in his final pretrial hearing. And this came out yesterday. It was actually first reported by... I think ABC News, ABC 7 Chicago. The uh, Wisconsin judge ruled that he will allow testimony from the defense's use of force expert. Remember I told you about that? The use of force expert for Kyle Rittenhouse, who said that he was justified in shooting the people who were trying to take his gun, as well as the man who who rushed him with a gun. (laughs) Ridiculous. Some of you guys point out that one of the guys was a, an alleged or convicted pedophile or something like that. I don't know. What a mess. These were evil people, rioters. Uh, and he will allow evidence that the police welcomed Kyle Jack Bauer, John Wick Rittenhouse, and others carrying guns during the demonstration, trying to keep the peace, being orderly and disciplined. By the way, I saw for the first time Kyle Rittenhouse punching a, punching a girl. Oh my gosh. You're pathetic, you simps, pretending that that was a bad thing, that that reflected badly on Kyle Rittenhouse. No, it didn't. He was punching a girl who was getting in a a fight, acting all aggressive. Give me a break. Weak. I may show that for you uh, later this week. Phony, phony, uh, false, what is that called? False outrage, phony outrage. Kyle Rittenhouse hit a girl. That girl is as big as him. Anyway, I'll have to show that to you (laughs) now that I've talked about it. I'll have to show that to you this week, but I don't have it for you right now. In a video taken before the shooting, officers riding an armored vehicle throw throw a water bottle to Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick Rittenhouse, and others who were out past the 8 p.m. curfew 
because they were trying to keep order because there were rioters in the streets. This was in Kenosha, Wisconsin. After the, uh, what's that guy's name? Blah, blah, blah. Some of you guys call him Jacob Blake, but I call him blah, blah, blah. It, when I remember. He got shot in the back because he wouldn't drop a knife and he was f- resisting arrest. A, uh, taser didn't work. And the cops said, we, had, one cop said, we appreciate you guys. We really do. Because there are citizens looking out for their community. Because the cops are not there to stop crime. The cops are there to stop the criminal after the crime is committed. Sometimes they do some pre- preemptive stuff. But people get mad at the preemptive strikes. So this Judge Bruce Schroeder, and I don't know about this judge. I don't know. This Judge Bruce Schroeder decided to allow that video. If the jury is being told, if the defendant is walking down the sidewalk and doing what he claims he was hired to do, and police say, good thing you're here, is that something influenced the defendant and emboldening him in his behavior? That would be an argument for relevance, the judge said. The judge is, that, that wording kind of leaves room for his behavior being questionable, but I don't think it was questionable at all. Schroeder also denied Prosecutor Binger's, I don't know the first name, request to bar the defense from referring to Rosenbaum, who was shot and killed, after he's the guy who said, shoot me, N-word, n <laughs> Not a normal white, not a Christian. I think he was like this Jewish Antifa, Black Lives Matter, male feminist, uh, convicted something, something, right? Convicted criminal. Having to do with children, as I recall. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Rosenbaum. Huber. Huber, was that the guy, or Grossenkreutz? Grosskreutz. Was Huber or Grosskreutz the one who, uh, who had the skateboard and slammed the skateboard onto Kyle Rittenhouse and then grabbed at the gun very foolishly, and Kyle fa- fired the weapon into the guy's chest, and he got uh, killed, obviously. And then one of them, either Huber or, J- or Grosskreutz, uh, was the guy with the gun, pistol, pointed at Kyle's head, basically, or just coming at Kyle, and Kyle shoots him in the arm, and his arm goes it's like kind of yikes, but right on very uh, effective skillful that's why I call him Jack Bauer John Wick and he didn't kill, he didn't hurt anybody who was an innocent bystander and there were crowds around so right on Kyle Rittenhouse um, pure self-defense uh, he denied the prosecutor's request to, from referring to those three criminals as rioters, looters, or arsonists. Two of them were killed. One of them, his arm was partly shot off or severely hurt, right? Forearm. The judge said those terms would be allowed if the defense can produce evidence showing that that's what they were. It's relevant. Give me a break. If more than one of them were engaged in arson, rioting, or looting, I'm not going to tell the defense you can't call them that. Freedom of speech, am I right? The judge said. The judge, most judges are dumb liberals, and this guy may no, be no uh, exception, but it's ridiculous. Prosecutors are ridiculous. The judge also ruled the two deceased men and the injured man could not be referred to as victims. Nice. So those are decent wins. Congratulations. I mean, it's ridiculous that he's even charged. It's clearly self-defense. He should not even be charged. It reminds me of George Zimmerman, who should never have been charged with anything, I don't think. Gunshots hurt, says Butch. Yeah, indeed. What's with the water noises Hake does? It's not catchy. Oh. <laughs> I'm not trying to be catchy. I'm just trying to start the show. Catchy. Anyway, uh... Thank you, Kyle Rittenhouse, defending your country. Chin up, King. We are with you. There's a whole bunch of evil people on Twitter saying, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse is a murderer, and everybody who defends him is a bad person. You see stuff like that. Those are bad people. They're bad people. Defending Kyle doesn't make you a good person, but whatever. Hey, cancel your other YouTube stream. Did I, am I on two YouTube streams? Oh, let me see. YouTube.com slash The Hake Report. No, no. Oh, you're right. I shall do that. Thank you for the heads up. Uh, 
whoever said that. Sorry, y'all. Go over to the other stream. What a mess. I wonder if I just didn't connect it or what happened. Uh, turn this private. Sorry, guys. Just a uh, little hiccup here with the stream. What a mess. I wonder how that happened. Oh, well. Not streaming to the scheduled show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Nick. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, guys. What a mess. He was just acting in self-defense, says Butch. Indeed. No, Nick, it's not your fault. <laughs> He's like, I was on the phone as well. As I noticed. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, let me tell you about this attack on kids. You can call in, guys. 888-775. Say, had people waiting for 10 minutes, Hake. Hey, LOL. Sorry, Costin. Thank you for the heads up. Shout out to the chat. Always giving the tips. 888-775-3773. But I saw this tweet and this exclusive from the Daily Mail. Jack Posobiec tweeted it out. I follow him. Yeah. And he's promoting some, some company called Braves Books US. I have not looked into them. So I cannot... I can neither disavow nor endorse. Okay? But... There are what they call woke bedtime books, like Anti-Racist Baby, and actually we have one from Justice S. Let me just show it to you. Yeah, Nick, I turned it private. I turned it private. Uh, Look at this. This was from, let me hold it in front of my shirt so you can see. Disgusting, huh? Disgusting. I have pictures of other books. But anti-racist, anti-racist or anti-racist baby. And this is, this is probably not the first time you've heard, heard of this book. Maybe you guys have seen it. It's like light. It's like three pages to this thing. Okay, maybe eight or twelve or twenty. But it's like ridiculous. Stupid. And, uh... So gross. So gross. Celebrate all of our differences. It's by this Ibrahim X. Kendi guy, and I have pictures of him. Illustrations by Ashley Lukashevsky. Sick, huh? Sick. Thank you to Justice Says for sending this to us. She sent us a bus- bunch of stuff. Crayola crayons. The colors of the world. Gross stuff. And you may be able to see that on the Jesse Lee Peterson show this week. Shout out to Justice. Catching that. Uh, Daily Mail exclusive. Goodbye, Moon. Bedtime goes woke as books like Anti-Racist Baby, Daddy, Daddy and Dada. A is for activists are dominating the shelves over at Barnes & Noble and whatever else book sh- bookstores still exist anymore. At, thanks to the communist shutdowns. With transgender tales and scary stories of police brutality meant to indoctrinate toddlers. A slew of woke children's books dominating bookshelves with titles like that. Uh, Teach Your Dragon About Diversity. Uh, There's a mother, is that two mothers? Feminist Baby. Seen at bookstores across the country. Featuring transgender infants, queer families, and dreamers. I guess the dreamers is a reference to the illegals, I'm not sure. But the subjects uh, above all others are race, police brutality, and activism. And the radical homosexual stuff. Horrific. I like myself. Tra- bla- trailblazer to grow in the book, burka. A is for activists in a black power, a weak black power fist from a child. Woke baby. Sick stuff, huh? Introducing narratives t- of very young children transitioning risks destroying children for the rest of their lives, says Walt Heyer, former guest of the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Author of Trans Life Survivors. This guy, this old guy who went transgender and then went back. Uh, Mahogany L. Brown is the author of Woke Baby. Writes about a race struggle. And, uh, Woke Babies raise their fists in the air. Woke Babies cry out for justice. Pathetic. Pathetic. 
Author John Butcher says these ideologies have no place in children's books, telling DailyMail.com, all of these books are meant to drive home the message to these young children that life is about struggle. <laughs> Anti-racist baby and other books are not designed to teach basic literacy or character formulation. They're designed to indoctrinate children into a specific ideology, says that guy who appears on Fox News a lot, Christopher Rufo. He's the guy that's, he's like the, one of the most prominent guys pushing against the CRT stuff. Some of you guys call him controlled opposition or whatever. Maybe he is. But he's right about that. It's ideological brainwashing. Sick. Start the programming young, says nine or 3,000. And by the way, it's Hillary Clinton's birthday. <laughs> she tweeted her tweet from 2016. October 26th, 2016. She calls herself happy birth. She tweeted to herself, or maybe one of her assistants tweeted this for her. Happy birthday to this future president. And it's a picture of her as a little girl. Being dumb. Do I, did I put that in the folder? I don't know if I put that in the folder. Let me see if I, oh, I do, I can, uh, I'll drag it in. I just had to restart my thing. Sick stuff, huh? I'm going to tell you about fathers going feminist, but before I, I'm going to go to Joe in Phoenix, Arizona in the meantime, as I get, as I pull myself together here. But I'll show you, during the call, you can just show this picture of Hillary once I get to, once I put that in there. Joe in Phoenix, Arizona. How are you doing, man? Doing well. Hold on one second, Jim. Hold on one second. <laughs> I gave him all this warning and uh, stuff, but I have time to put this Hillary Clinton thing in there. Joe in sorry Phoenix, this part. is not like you. That's not like you. you yeah, normally, you're ready. I, I, I wasn't. You're right. Sorry about that. I wasn't ready. All right. So I'm actually <laughs> calling to actually. I mean, hell must be freezing over. Jesse actually showed a positive news clip about black men. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> my, jaw, my jaw was on the floor. Oh, yeah? I mean, he kind of tr- tried to walk it back a little bit, but, you know, if you see him, tell him I said, good job. That's funny, if I see him. Yeah, so what Joe from Phoenix, Arizona is referring to, guys, is... uh uh-huh is this story, and I almost covered it too, a day or a few ago, of these black fathers, it's like dads on duty, in Shreveport, Shreveport, Louisiana. Some of them are kind of fat. But they're, you know, Louise, you know, southern people, I love you, but you gotta get fit. Um, The black kids are out of control, right? Fighting and all that stuff. So th- there's these fathers who are going in and standing around and protecting people and making jokes, and the kids love it. And that's nice. Although it's a little yeah. weird. They got T-shirts and stuff, dads on duty T-shirts. Mm-hmm. So black. <laughs> Isn't that oh, so black? <laughs> yeah, we actually agree. I mean, my brother lives in Louisiana, and uh, obesity crisis is, is ridiculous down there. Yeah. Yep. Um... But yeah, man. This, it's not the, this is it's, what I've been. That's this is what I've been trying to tell you for years, James. What? These type of actions that will make a difference. They'll make a little bit of a difference. It's it's nice, um, and it's nice if the fathers can be there and and like speak up and be like, no, don't do this. Don't teach your anti-racist baby stuff to my, to my baby. <laughs> Blacks call their well, grown see, grown children babies. Uh, he is not being taught in most elementary schools, James. Good. Yeah, but they're, the average teacher is getting worse and worse, more and more brainwashed. As you know, the colleges are out of control with indoctrination, and the colleges are what's producing these teachers. And granted, no. it's not just colleges. It's social media establishment. You saw how the social media worldwide endorsed Black Lives Matter. Disgusting. That was after the Georgia-Florida thing. Well, and even before that. that, they were in- endorsing Black Lives Matter. So you know I'm young, not a BLM supporter. So I know, but the B, but the but the average teacher is. I bet you the average uh, teacher, young young teacher, twenties in their twenties, they're BLM supporters, blind brainwashed well, fools, educated fools, as. That's why I kept my kids in private school. So. Yeah, even those are getting subverted. It's such a shame. 
it depends. I mean, you, you can still find some good schools out there that teach the right curriculum and focus on real education. But anyway, I mean, it's excellent, excellent, excellent. Give Jesse a high five for me and do more of that, please. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Joe, nice to hear from you. All right. Yeah, no, no fighting today. Have a good day. <laughs> All right. I couldn't even, well, I was trying to pick a fight, but what a mess. Uh, fathers begin to be good. There are, there are fathers who are not any good. There are fathers who are going feminist. I saw this Sunday morning when I was getting ready for church. BLM are useful idiots, says Alpha45. Indeed. Oh, yeah, here's the Clinton pick. Here's Hillary Clinton saying, look at her. She looked weird even back then. I'm, I'm speechless because I don't want to say anything <laughs> inappropriate. But that, look at that face. I mean, you just see the arrogant spirit in her, <laughs> even as a little girl. I mean, I just, oh, man. Maybe it's because I know what she's like. <laughs> uh, Nick says, oh, that's why I see, keep on seeing a picture of Greta Thunberg in the same picture. Same position in black and white. Terrible, huh? Terrible. So, I saw this on Pocket. You know how I... Seven months ago, back, I was covering Pocket Stories. Uh, Pocket are a bunch of headlines that get all conglomerated together. I don't know if I'm using the right words. I'm talking like the blacks do. Um, they get all bunched together. It's uh, basically cherry-picked liberal, liberal articles that Pocket shares. And Pocket shares them on this web browser called Firefox. I used to have Pocket when I first became producer of the JLP show because I thought it was a handy way to save articles that I wanted to look into as a producer to uh, present or whatever. But they've always been pretty liberal, and it's, they're worse now than ever. Here is a Guardian headline. And actually, I, sh I had this in the folder yesterday, I think. How to raise a boy. My mission to bring up a son fit for the 21st century. And it's by this guy named Tom Lamont. And I don't know if this guy's black or white or what. The article has a picture in it that may be just a... Uh, what are those things? Stock photography of a black father and a black son. But this post originally appeared in, in the far left Enemies of America, Enemies of the UK, Guardian... Foreign outlet, The Guardian. I call it foreign because the UK is no longer even, they're no longer even really our brothers. See, like, light skin, black uh, father and their son on the trampoline, Getty Images. So I don't think that's this Tom Lamont guy. I think this Tom Lamont guy might be a white Brit, who knows. A uh, man who surrenders what's right in favor of evil. So, he says, he starts out by telling this story, it was the only time a woman had ever finished first in a grand national, which I assume is like a horse race, right? The commentators shouted, and all of at once, my son started to cry, and his son is like four years old. And, you know, boys against girls. We like, we like that as kids. It's innocent, it's natural, but this guy's trying to act like that's un unnatural. Where does it come from, I wondered, says this Tom Lamont. Cuck. Surrendering what's right in favor of evil. Simp. Uh, this knee-jerk alliance that distances little boys from little girls and makes an us versus them of gender distinctions. Give me a break, huh? And he talks about the slow turbulence of the hashtag Me Too movement, which is pure evil. I talked about how uh, Rolling Stone, which is doing a hit piece on Republicans, did a hit piece on Republicans, this put out this Sunday, this past Sunday, about the January 6th riot. Well, Rolling Stone, several years back, put out a, a rape on campus, and it was totally, it was a lie. It was a lie. They had to completely uh, retract the article, written by an evil female. So, part of, there's part of the Me Too movement. It's just like the fake hate crimes thing. You know, hate crimes. Most of them are, most of them are, it's the N-word or a swastika, spray-painted on a wall by a black or a gay. <laughs> 
when same thing with the Me Too movement, women falsely accusing men, and then sometimes the the accusations are true, but they don't tell what their side of the story was, what they did to get involved in it, right? You have to blame the the so-called victim too. So anyway, this guy gives credence to the Me Too movement with all oh, its reevaluations and reckonings. Reckoning is a liberal word, a commie word, against men, against whites. Racial reckoning of the George Floyd riots. Give me a break. Since Harvey Weinstein was brought to account for his supposed crimes in 2017. I don't know if he'd committed any crimes, really. Then the sharp and terrible shock of Sarah Everard's murder in the spring of 2021, supposedly. Don't know about that one. Maybe I read about that in Hague News several months ago. These events helped adjust the way a lot of us price and make room for masculinity's expression in society. This reminds me of this guy, Black, Michael Ian Black, who's this Jewish comedian, uh, I think his original name is Schwartz, according to Dylon, my former de facto producer, uh, but he said that Schwartz was too Jewish, so he changed his name to Black. So, a, uh, an anti-Jewish Jew who hates, uh, men, he tweeted about how boys need to, are too masculine, and so... JLP tweeted at him, and he got all mad at J.C. Lee Peterson a year or two ago, pretending that he was all about boys. And the mainstream media, of course, propped up this Michael Ian black guy. All these males pretending that there's a crisis of boyhood, but they want to go the opposite direction and turn them into little girls. Pathetic. Feminism, uh, hold on, let me tell you about this. This guy goes to experts, and he, who does he go to to raise boys? He goes to a bunch of females, a bunch of females with foreign, weird-sounding names. This is a Brit. Talk about ridiculous. That's the definition of that C-U-C-K word that I mentioned, but I sometimes blush at saying because children don't repeat it. But it's, it means, just to me, forsaking normalness, what's right. I was watching a video of a speech, this guy says, Tom Lamont. Of, on The Guardian, in 2019 by the novelist and activist Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Ngozi Adichie. Adichie argued, more or less re- irrefutably, that it was time to make feminists of the world's young men. And she said that coolly. Feminism has, this is a quote from her, feminism has to make a lot more room for the engagement with men of men, about men. Otherwise, we're not getting anywhere. The feminist boys have to get on board, she said. So this guy says he was reading the opening chapters of a book called How to Raise a Feminist Son by an Indian-born writer and academic called Sonora Jha. J-H-A. Woman. Another woman. He's going to women. I sent her a plaintive email. How should I raise my son in 2021? This simp Acting all humble with this woman. She answered and arranged a phone call. She now lives on the west coast of the United States, this Indian-born woman. She's all, I'm glad you're asking the question. It's about time, you know. Traditional masculine, well, I'm talking like she's a, I'm imitating her like she's a valley girl, but she's Indian-born. Like India, Indian. Traditional masculinity is not working. I just don't mean just for women. It's not working for our boys. It's not working for our young men. Excuse me, you don't even have any young men. Or maybe she does have children. But she's talking about the socialist hour, the communist hour, the Hillary Clinton, it takes a village to raise a child hour. Like your children as a parent, as a father or a mother, are not your own. They're the communities. That's why we can vaccinate them. (laughs) Sick stuff, huh? She brought up mask wearing during the scam demic, and she bashed Trump. She's all last year we saw Donald Trump make mask wearing about masculinity. I don't remember that. I remember Trump, which it kind of is. It's, I'm glad she picked up on that. But it is. It's, uh, it's about dignity. He said, I don't think it would be a good uh, example or a good look for the president to be wearing a mask outside like a coward. Like a like sleazy Joe, right? That has literally led to death, she says. Not wearing a mask has literally led to death. No evidence of that, by the way. 
misogyny, homophobia, these things happen when traditional masculinity veers into tox- toxic masculinity. I say there's no evidence of that because Trump wore a mask at Walter Reed Medical Center at the hospital where you're supposed to, right? Duh. That is misogyny, homophobia. These things happen when traditional masculinity veers into toxic masculinity. So now these, those who worship masculinity are also dying from it, she says. So I think people are realizing that something needs to change. And she spells realizing with an S, like a dumb British. She's living in America. She should spell it with a Z. Realize with a Z. Like Adichie, the another woman, Ja felt like the one answer might be to raise, bo- raise boys inside a pronounced feminist value system. It can be subtle. It can be subtle. She raised her son, who's now in his early 20s, as a single mother. And this guy's going to her. Give me a break. I will get to your calls, guys. Hang tight. In all that time bringing him up, I may have used the word feminism about three times. I wasn't like I woke him up in the morning and said, here are the principles of feminism you will learn today. Instead, it was allowing him to cry. It was talking about how things may be uneven in the world towards girls. This woman is evil. Raising him here in the U.S. as a young man of color, he was, and she spelled color wrong too. She spelled color the British way. Get her out of here. He was being called a certain kind of masculine, color is spelled C-O-L-O-R. This is America, right? He was being called a certain kind of masculinity, and he didn't necessarily feel comfortable around that. For me, it was an act of compassion towards him to introduce feminism. And then she said, as a guiding principle, not as a theoretical concept, right? And then she chuckled. Around the time her son left home, she recalled she mentioned to him in passing that she'd raised him to be a feminist. And he said, no, no, I discovered it on my own. And she's all, I smiled to myself at that. Isn't that how the typical people are? You know how people will say, oh, I think for myself. I look at what's going on and I can see it. I'm a black Hebrew Israelite. I just looked at the facts and figured it out on my own. No, you're a suckers. I don't think there is such a thing as thinking for yourself. So anyway, she wrote this book, How to Raise a Feminist Son. Some men lashed out in response, of course, this jaw woman said. Uh, that boy, a boy will be bullied if he is not a bully. We have to break that idea. We've decided this is how men will win, whether they be a jobs, women, or leadership. It doesn't need to be that way. A more equitable, empathic, meaning empathetic, liberal word. You, you heard that, that coward guy say, oh, you think empathy is a liberal word. He called my show yesterday and said, you think empathy is a liberal word? Because it is. It's a false replacement of love. What a mess. It's not just about raising gentle, empathic boys. It's about explaining to those boys there are certain structures preferable to men, and we want to dismantle those structures. Typical communist nonsense that this evil woman is talking about. Isn't that what Satan did? Satan told Eve, you could be equal with God. Didn't he say that? But no. Sick stuff. So they want to pretend it's about self-interest. That you can, you're not less of a man if you're crying or staying at home or uh, you fail in your job or your woman makes more money than you or whatever. And he, then he gave another woman with another foreign name. And his name is Tom Lamont. Sounds like a nice, normal British name. And he's going to... He's going to Sonora Ja, Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and this, listen to this name, Uju Asika. Asika, the London-based author of a parenting blog and mother of two early teenage boys. She's all, I listen to my eldest playing video games with his friends. There's all this banter. You want to leap in, correct, criticize, condemn. But it's been a learning process for me. I've been learning to listen more, wait more. See where they're coming from. I might ask, why did you say that? Do you understand what it meant? I try to challenge their viewpoints, but at the same time accept all this is just their experience. She used a TV sitcom. She was watching Friends with these uh, young boys, these uh, teenage boys. 
Friends is not an appropriate TV show to watch with teenage boys. I don't even think I ever watched Friends in college when it was kind of big. Friends, degenerate TV show. But then they complain about even that. We've been watching Friends again, just full of stuff. You might want to um, challenge this Uju Asika woman says. There was an episode where this guy named Ross, if you guys watched Friends, I feel for you. But there's a male named Ross who is part of Friends, right? And this character, fictional character, was worried about his son playing with a Barbie instead of a G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, uh, I'm, bl- I'm uh, remembering um, Donning Armor accused me of playing with Barbie instead of G.I. Joe. Not true, Donning Armor. Asika and her f- f- sons watching wound up having a profitable chat about gender stereotypes. So this woman is brain- this evil mother is brainwashing her children. I wonder if she's a single mother too or if her simp husband is like this, is going along with this. A quick chat. When I go into lecture mode, I can see them zoning out. Of course. <laughs> oh my gosh. Kids have a really short, short attention spans. But in a way, okay, so that was, that was a, the third foreign, foreigner female name that this guy's looks to. Here's a fourth one. She's also published a book called Bringing Up Race after Georgia, Florida was so-called murdered. Just all lies. Here's the fourth foreign name. Danusia Malina hyphen Durbin. Sounds almost like there's a little bit of a... Uh, f- Durbin may, may be British, I don't know. Mother of ten f- from South Downs. Started to pick apart this question, where does the boy in boy come from? Half of, and then she has a child who thinks that he's transgender or... Or, uh, half of me is boy, half of me is a girl. Schools for mothers, schools for fathers. And she coaches male-dominated sectors, corporate sectors. This woman is a coach in the corporate world. Talking to hundreds of men about their grief. About having to be the strong one, the leader, the breadwinner, the big guy at all costs. An awful lot gets spoken about the privileges of masculinity. Particularly white masculinity particularly white humans who identify as men. What a blind, brainwashed, evil woman. Giving into the transgender madness. Sick stuff, huh? Her child was three years old when, uh, when she or he first came to Malina-Durban, Malina-Durban, with questions about his or her identity. I don't know if it's a little girl or a little boy. But they tell this uh, Tom Lamont guy says, oh, his pronouns are he and him. But it makes me think maybe the little boy is actually a little girl. This Danusia woman. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. Sick, huh? Pathetic. Anyway. I got to show you this clip that came out. You know how yesterday I was talking about, uh, not yesterday, last week or two, I was talking about Kirsten Cinema, K Y R S T E N Cinema, S I N E M A, which reminds me of Christian movies, Christian cinema. But no, it's Kirsten Cinema. This woman is a Democrat, a uh, blonde haired white woman. I think she's white. And. She is, they were all celebrating a couple of years ago, a few years ago, I think 2018 maybe. She was uh, bisexual. Nasty, huh? Terrible. Why even bring it up if you're that degenerate? Why even be running for office if it was a woman? But even she is not as off the deep end evil, apparently. Or maybe she is. She's just playing a role. Who knows? As the rest of the Democrats. She's like one person. And Joe Manchin, another male Democrat, cringe, but at least he's pro-life. He's from the South. But Kirsten Cinema of Arizona, Senator. How embarrassing, huh? Uh, Arizona, what happened to you? She's been hounded. People followed her into restrooms. Illegal aliens. And they're just out of control. Oh, turn on the AC. It's hot in here. They're out of control, pushing this stuff like, 
oh, you need to pass Joe Biden's Build Back Better Act or whatever he's trying to push, right? Because it has amnesty for us. You have to follow through with what you promised. It's not right. Dumb evil. Can I, is Beaner a bad word? Thank you for the AC. Um, she's talking like a total Beaner. No offense to the Beaners. I love the Beaners. The people who talk like they're so like, <laughs> such a foreign accent, you know, like Mexican accent. But this woman doesn't belong here, and she's all, oh, I couldn't go to my grandparents' funeral because I wouldn't be let back in because I'm illegal, or whatever she said. So Kristen Cinema to this day, is being hounded and harassed. This video went, was going viral. To this day! This is put out by, a, I think he's a radical homosexual guy, Keith Boykin, black. Talking head on, on liberal cable news, communist cable news. He on, on Twitter, he describes it this way. Arizona Senator, oh, that AC feels good. Arizona Senator Kirsten Cinema apologizes to South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, you know, that black rhino, because a woman from Arizona, purportedly, tries to ask her a question in the airport. Tried to ask her a bunch of questions. It wasn't just one question. This Keith Boykin, Boykin guy is a liar. Watch this video and listen, and hopefully you can understand what they're saying. It's kind of, you know, it's a lot of noise because they're walking through the airport. And, there's, and they're wearing masks, too. So you can also barely understand it because they're, like, muffled. So listen to this and watch. I'm from Tucson, Arizona. I think it's uh, and I am wondering, quite interesting. I know you've met with yeah. dozens of lobbyists. You know, I did not touch you. I'm meeting with dozens, I know you're meeting with dozens of lobbyists. The world doesn't really want to Talking with corporate donors about the package. Yeah, that's How many times will you meet with constituents? Well, How many times have you met with constituents yeah. in negotiating bills? Sorry about this. Yeah, well, a, I think it's part of the course, right? It part is. of the course. So why won't you meet with my family, my constituents? Yeah. I can have them meet you next week. Well, Every single year in Arizona, it's getting hotter and hotter. We're breaking records. Because either no <laughs> I know. one sued, or it's the longest season. Yeah. People are suffering. Your constituents are suffering. What are you going to do about climate change? Next week in Glasgow could be the last chance. Please answer me, Senator. My family, my house, we're from Tucson. We're constituents. Shut up. Thanks for your work, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know who to hate more. <laughs> the phony activist woman who's pretending like she cares about climate change, dumb, blind, brainwashed person. Or Tim Scott. Who is she yapping at? Or Kristen Cinema, who's muzzled like dogs. Yeah. Ridiculous. And uh, Tim Scott was like, oh, it's par for the course. And Kristen Cinema is like, I'm sorry. Sorry to use you to, in order to ignore this dumb, evil woman yapping at me. Good word, yapping. Karen Williams. Blue checkmark Jordan Uhl describes it. Kristen Cinema and Republican Tim Scott mingle while someone asks Cinema what... Why she won't meet with constituents, only wealthy donor, donors and lobbyists. Cinema's response, don't touch me. Because she's all, don't touch me. I didn't touch you. Dumb woman. Dumb woman being the, uh, the anonymous woman. Shut your trap. Evil, huh? Who cares about this climate mess? There's always been monsoons in Arizona. Blind, blind brainwashed people. They're pushing this climate mess. They're going to be meeting, Sleepy Joe is going to go to this COP26 thing, Conference of Parties 26. It's a bunch of phony people, UN type stuff. And another, a UN, oh, that might be the UN one. And then a, another thing with, within days of that. Another silly conference. Here it is, uh, the G20 Summit. The group of 20, which is 19 countries, I think, plus the EU, they're meeting in Rome. COP26, 26th Annual Conference of the Parties, Climate Talks. That's the 2021 United Nations Climate Change Conference in Glasgow. Is it Glasgow or Glasgow? I like to pronounce it Glasgow, but I have a feeling it's Glasgow. Scotland. 
And I'm Scottish too, man. I'll pronounce it how I want. Uh, Sunday the 31st through November 12th. Friday, November 12th. Bunch of people with no life. <laughs> Michael A. says, Hey, I've read a report yesterday saying Florida will not be growing any more palm trees to help fight the climate crisis. Oh, gosh. Climate crisis, climate change is real, but Haik knows everything. My bad, I forgot. Says Steady dropping him. That's right. That's right. The UN, the UN says that the uh, world is way off track from its target to cut emissions in an attempt to reduce global warming. Who's way off? The UN is way off. They're way off base trying to meddle in America's affairs, calling America a racist country, violating human rights. The UN does that. United Nations. I'm glad that Trump left the United Nations Human Rights Council, but Sleepy Joe put us back in, or whoever's running the, whoever's running the show. I know that it's not Sleepy Joe, but right on Kirsten Cinema. I, I guess I think that these people should, she should really just be more confrontational about, to them. Like you're, you are not an honest person. You're a phony. This climate stuff is. I mean, she's a Democrat, so she probably buys into that thing a little bit. But the climate thing is a power grab. It's a globalist power grab away from the businesses. Yeah, what do palm trees have to do with climate change? I don't know, Ghost Rider. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they don't give enough shade. They need other trees. Who knows? And then they're also pushing this, oh, communist spending bill. They're pushing amnesty for illegals. That's not the normal Arizona constituent. The normal Arizona constituent is, I would say, at least as conservative as, as Kristen, Kristen Cinema, and she's not very, if not more so. Because for years, the senators from Arizona have been Republicans. Rhino Republicans, I know. John McCain, Jeff Flake, and I mean Flake when I say Jeff Flake. Trump haters. Trump hater rhinos. Ridiculous. But they've been invaded by the illegals. And then blind brainwashed women. So sick. Speaking of illegals, I have these photographs to show you guys. Uh, I was checking out Jack Posobiec's Twitter. And he shared this Daily Mail article. He's a... Uh, we met him. He was over at the uh, Night for Freedom some years back over in Washington, D.C., when JLP spoke there, Night for Freedom, Cernovich's Night for Freedom, some years back. Over there, we met, uh, we met that guy who's been on the JLP show a couple of times. Um, I have a picture with him. American Renaissance guy, he was there. Jared Taylor. He was at a Night for Freedom. That was cool. But anyway, Jack Posobiec was help, helping organize that thing. He met us over there. But he tweeted out, he, I think he's with One American News Network. A lot of you guys don't like him. <laughs> uh, but whatever. Daily Mail reports, Texas is bracing for the, quote, mother of all caravans. And we've already had mothers of all caravans. Just stretching a little bit. I ran yesterday for the first time in, like, years. I didn't run far, but... Oh, I'll tell you about it later, the, maybe at the top of the hour. Uh, a thousand state troopers and Texas Rangers deployed to the border as 3,000 migrants. It doesn't sound like so many anymore. I'm like desensitized. These numbers are just mind boggling. And wasn't there one of like 10,000? But maybe this is truly 3,000 strong migrants prepared to arrive in days from the Daily Mail for an outlet. Look at that. And it's, it's multicultural. This is an invasion. And I know they don't have guns, but they don't have our values either. I'd be happier if they did have guns. <laughs> Honestly. Little babies who are going to be brainwashed, anti-racist babies. Including 250 children. 250 children out of 3,000 so-called migrants. I bet you it's mostly males, too. Fighting age males or working age males. And we have... Supposedly, we have like a worker crisis, but we also have a wage crisis, right? Wages are low. People are not working. And uh, the supply chain's all messed up. 
and these people are coming in to invade and take advantage. The migrants departed the border town of Tapachula in Chiapas on Saturday and were resting in Huehuetan, Huehuetan under the hot sun on Monday. This group is called by organizers as Madre, Madre Caravana, <laughs> Mother Caravan. Evil, huh? Look at this guy carrying a, or woman, carrying a cross. I'm not fooled. Migrants from Africa, Central America, Haiti, South America walk on a highway in Mexico on Monday. 3,000 traveling to Mexico City where they plan to demand documents that would allow them to move freely in the country as part of their plan to... So they're illegals in Mexico. Uh, to reach the border with the United States. Uh, wouldn't, don't you miss Trump? Don't you miss Trump? At least a thousand state troopers and Texas Rangers assigned to monitor the border. Uh, it's part of the state's Operation Lone Star, the Lone Star State. I like when Hake tries to speak Spanish. <laughs> Is that what you're saying, Jib Jeff? <laughs> what a mess. That reminds me, maybe sometime this week, speaking of Arizona and illegals, and amnesty, and all of this mess. Sometime this week, I would like to play this clip just to remind you how evil and phony this John McCain guy was. The former senator from Arizona. I don't know. Who do you prefer, the, the lesbian or bisexual, whatever you want to call her, degenerate, Kristen Cinema? Is she a millennial? Is she like my age? Maybe she's a little older. I'm not sure. Or this John McCain dinosaur. Let's see. Kir- Kirsten Cinema Age. She's 45. Okay, she's Gen X. Whew. What a mess. Uh. <laughs> Thank you for the tip, guys, over there on Odyssey. Um, evil, huh? Evil. John McCain. I, uh, what I want to play for you guys later this week, I think, is Senator John McCain's election night speech. That was his, oh, I lost fair and square to Obama in 2008, and he's pretending that racism exists, and he's kissing up to the black men and kissing up to the blacks and being all phony, and people are like, oh, that's a man. He used, he used to be a POW. And it's pathetic. And he was part of the Gang of Eight stuff. He's a disgusting person. Gang of Eight is the people who were pushing amnesty. I think they were Republicans, mostly. So was Mo- little Marco Rubio, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But I just want to play like a few minutes of that clip. It's gross. It's gross. Real quick, guys, let me tell you about this Mike Pence thing before I get to call, get back to calls. Uh, this was out from a Washington Compost article uh, about Bob Woodward's book, Peril. Bob Woodward and Robert Costa, Bob Costa, well, I don't know what his name is, which lionized, that book lionized Mark Milley, is, who just totally betrayed Trump and America. And pretended that he was, he's a treasonous liberal, Mark Milley, who was this chief, Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman or something like that, right? Phony general, right? Well, listen to this about Mike Pence, in defense of Mike Pence, because you guys hate Mike Pence, and then I'll get back to calls. After Pence refuses to overturn the election, Trump tells him, I don't want to be your friend anymore if you don't do this. <laughs> and Richard Hanania on Twitter, who's an interesting person somewhat, Calls it the most pathetic coup plotter, fake anti-war president in history. (laughs) And so the Washington uh, Compost article says, Peril by Bob Woodward and Robert Costa reports General Mark Milley called a Chinese general uh, twice to pledge the U.S. wouldn't strike in a bid to avert armed conflict. And the headline was, Top General was so fearful Trump might spark war that he made secret calls to his Chinese counterpart. But if you look at this, Anyway, back to Pence, though, from this same article. So intent was Pence on being Trump's loyal second-in-command and potential successor that he— This is Bob Woodward writing, right? Or Washington Compost writing. Or Bob Robert Costa. 
that he asked confidants if there was any way, more ways he could accede, accede, accede to Trump's demands and avoid certifying the results of the election on January 6th. Pence wanted to help Trump. In late December, the authors reveal, Pence called Dan Quayle. Dan Quayle, correct me if I'm wrong, was Dan Quayle the vice, no, he wasn't vice president. Under Reagan? No, because that was George Bush the daddy. Quayle was under the Reagan administration, right? He was a, anyway, I think he, a former vice president. Yeah, he was a former vice president. And fellow Indiana Republican for advice. Quayle was adamant. Dan Quayle, according to the authors, Mike, as in Mike Pence, you have no flexibility on this. None, zero, forget it, put it away, he said. Dan Quayle gave him bad advice. Pence should have just listened to Trump. But Pence pressed him, the authors write, asking if there were any grounds to pause certification because of ongoing legal challenges. Quayle was unmoved, and Pence ultimately agreed. So he, fi- he was kind of a coward, I guess you could say. And Trump said, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> but uh, he went with the establishment. The establishment has major pressure, including Quayle, who's like a dinosaur at this point. When Pence said he planned to certify the results... President Trump lashed out. In the Oval Office on January 5th, the authors write, Pence told Trump he could not thwart the process. His role was simply to open the envelopes on January 6th, right? I don't want to be your friend anymore if you do this, Trump replied, according to the book, later telling his vice president, you've betrayed us. I made you. You were nothing. (laughs) Right on, Trump, if this story is true, if you believe it. So Pence, Quayle, Quayle was under Bush... Senior. Oh, okay. Quayle was under Bush the daddy. Oh, he was? Okay. Huh. I remember being in, like, first grade, and somebody said, oh, my mom's the vice president. He's not Quayle, was what the teacher said. Maybe I was in second grade. But that's why I was thinking, that's Ray- Reagan, but I guess it's not. Anyway, I must have been in second grade because... Uh, Anyway, I was just thinking about who was president when. Let's get to calls finally, guys. Shall I? Bobby in Texas, how are you doing? Thank you for holding. What's up? Doing well, James. How you doing, buddy? Doing well as well. Thank you, man. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure, like, how to phrase it, but okay. And I don't know if you're familiar. In August, I guess is what they're reporting now. There were over 4.5 million people that left their jobs. Uh huh. Are, are you familiar with that stat? Yeah, I think I had heard that stat. 4.5 okay, so, million. Yeah, 4.5 million people left their jobs, but yet. Between very, August and, and what? Uh, I guess August and September. I think it was just in the oh, month wow. of August alone. Whoa. Okay. So, but yet nobody was filling the job openings that are available. They didn't go from you know, working for one company and go find a job at another company. Yeah. So they have, and God knows what it's going to be for September and October due to the, you know, vaccine mandates. How many people are going to leave due just for Do you, those reasons? Yeah, the, there's the vaccine mandates. There is the increasing prices. There's the low wages. There is the uh, subsidizing of not working. It's a big mess, huh? Right. It's and like I mean, everything, really- we're doing everything wrong. We being the the government and companies or whatever. And then in, in September they ended, you know, nationally. I don't know if they've extended it anywhere. Oh, all, right. We, you and I were arguing about, well, I was arguing with you about that, uh, right. about the wisdom of the Republican states, some of them, including Texas, canceling those prematurely, those right. extra payments. Yeah. Which I, I don't know if it, if it affects them. I know we still have people, there's job openings everywhere here as well. So I don't know like how many people left their jobs here or what yeah. the exact, you know, state by state breakdown is. I know that when they cut those benefits, my business took a huge hit because so many people were, you know, not working that they were coming to my business like during the daytime and spending money. So now that's definitely slowed down ever since it shut down. But right. What are you going to do? Yeah. So it was nice. Like, it's nice to get what we could while we had that opportunity because people that weren't working were just like during the daytime, they were coming into my work, which now is like that's really our hardest, our slowest time of day. Say that again. 
during the daytime, like uh, when people should be working, like during that period of time, we were booked solid. You know, we had nonstop. Okay. People coming into my work, but now that that time frame is almost like a ghost town during those those hours. Wow. But you know, it's, it is what it is. But I'm just curious, like, what are these people? You know, how are they doing this? What's their? How is their? How are they able to feed their families? And you know, is it just that they're just decided to take the unemployment? I think there's a lot of people taking unemployment, but I really don't know, because I honestly I don't know anybody who's who's told me that they're not working. So I don't know. Right. I haven't really yeah. kept up with the situation. But it's, you keep on hearing about, oh, it's a, it's a mass exodus, and there are right articles written on why people are losing their job or leaving their jobs. And I don't know. People, it seems like a, it seems like it's all, I don't know how they're functioning, for sure. I just don't know. But it seems like a yeah. scam in order to break our system in order to rebuild a, 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 an even worse commie capitalist system that we have now. Do you think it's like a, a matter desperate? of people wanting like to put more pressure on those, you know, large companies that are, you know, basically stealing people's, you know, hours for, you know, as little as little as they can pay them. And so these people are, like, basically, like, as a form of strike, they're just like, we're just not going to work. We'll find, you know, we'll wait until it turns around. Or I, I don't really know. It's like, yeah, could it be that it's just like an attack on on those, you know, those large enough companies that are like, we're just not going to, you know, we're not going to trade our hours for, you know, penance anymore. We're going to get you know, what we're worth. Maybe. But you know I, what? There may, be, there may be something to that because during this scam-demic, a bunch of, it, the, you saw the co- what I called the communist shutdowns, but they're commie capitalist shutdowns. Because mm-hmm. the big companies that you just referenced, Amazon, Tesla, I don't know if Tesla really counts in this, in this sense, but Amazon and all those companies, they're making bank, Netflix and all them, they're making bank during, while everybody else, all the uh, independent people, the more local people, are suffering. Getting shut down. Right. Exactly. And so there's fewer places to work, even though there are, uh, there's an abundance of jobs, supposedly, including trucker jobs, guys. Um, yeah, actually, my brother, he's, uh, he's about to start doing the trucking business, like, so we'll see. I, rem- I remember <laughs> talking with that incel guy who, who's uh, been on my show. He's been on JLP's show as well as The Fallen State. He... Uh, he didn't want to do trucking because in like 10 to 20 years, trucking is going to be automated or whatever. And so he didn't want to use, you, would, you could have a great 10 to 20 year career doing trucking. It's a good skill. <laughs> and in the meantime, you find something else. But anyway, automation. I mean, what, what, automated, I don't know. I, well, I mean, self-driving I'm vehicles. I, I, I could see maybe trucks maybe do that someday. But yeah, maybe it's. I, I wouldn't know if I'd say 20 years. I think that's probably further away than that. It might Maybe. be. Yeah, I think the guy was getting ahead of himself, for sure. I haven't even seen the automated cars really yet. So <laughs> I think there's like two cities in America that are automated. So I guess in California, there's a little bit of it. Yeah. There's been someone get run over by an automated car. There's been There have been accidents, for sure. And mishaps and scary things. Like, I wouldn't trust it. Some people use those things. I mean, there's, there's, there are systems in cars that keep you a certain distance from the uh, vehicle, and it'll like slow you down if yeah. uh, if the thing gets closer. What it's crazy, but no, it's just people are. I think there is a whole lot of pettiness, but you can't just blame the people because you also have, meaning by pettiness I mean lazy. Uh, Trifling, money grubbing, taking the free welfare, so called free welfare, well, and uh, unemployment stuff. There is some of that because the this country has become more corrupt. So that is part of it. But of course, those those benefits have run out, so they're not getting that extra money. So I mean, they're getting a small regular amount, you know, amount of money now for. But I guess smaller. if you're, yeah, well, much smaller. Like that was 
that was a big chunk of what people were getting. Like that three hundred dollars was was usually it? double what a lot of people were already getting. Three hundred dollars every how often? Two weeks or a week or two weeks? Yeah, I think it was a week. I think it was three hundred a week, and oh, then wow. most people make were making about some people. Yeah, I knew. Yeah, I mean, at mm-hmm. one point, I think I was making six hundred bucks every two weeks. Yeah, so they're and they're plus the they also get like two or I think it was like three hundred roughly for like people that were minimum wage position yeah. jobs that had been paying in, they were getting like three hundred plus the three hundred added to it. So you're getting six hundred a week. Man, that is nuts. It, it added up. But now that that's over and the, and then we're talking August, so that means like the uh, you know, the next month it ran out. Right. So it wouldn't make sense for people to be like, I'm gonna leave my job now and collect, you know, twelve hundred dollars and I'll be good to go. You know, it's I don't think that's the case really. Yeah. I'm a little curious. Like that's just kind of got me kind of wondering where those, where all these employees have gone and like, what are they? Maybe they're making their own businesses. Maybe they're, you yeah. Know. I mean, there's, I will say there's nobody starving in America. If they are well, maybe up in Appalachia or whatever, you guys <laughs> can correct me, but I don't think there is anybody starving in America. We're, uh, we have a lot of room before the desperation sets in. But maybe we don't have as much room as I think because this, this uh, just-in-time type of uh, supply chain thing that we have is what I've heard. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're cramping down on the... Cramping down? They are clamping down on the supply chain by, by saying, I don't know, what is, it, what is the, with the supply chain being all messed up? You saw all these boats circling around, can't come to the port? Is that because of the, the communist mandates? Telling people, oh, you have to be vaccinated and wear a mask and stuff, and then the workers don't necessarily yeah, want to I'm do that. I'm curious truckers? about that too. It's why, like, I mean, Buttigieg is out breastfeeding his baby, so <laughs> oh gosh, I mean, he's, both, yeah. he's the one that's supposed to be in in charge of this whole whole business. So Did I cover that? Why we I? have? Yeah, that's terrible. Why we have all these people out, you know, circling the ports, and they're not allowing people to dock. It's like it's very, very odd, very yeah. troubling. Like why they were. To me, Fortunately, where I live hasn't really been affected too hard yet, but yeah, they're expecting it to get much worse. So, to me, it's like this. I keep on saying it: communists trying to break the commie capitalists or whatever you want to call them, trying to break the system and make people desperate, and then they're then they're they're reliant on uh, whoever wants to take power, the, even the more meantime, power than they, they already jack, have. They can jack those prices up on Whoever's any goods power. that are available. And then, so when they do have them, you know, they're not going to be like, oh, well, now we have it. Let's lower the prices back down. They can just keep them hiked up. Yeah. And people have to pay it to continue on. And right now they can use the shortage as a reason to jack those prices. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah even uh, that was kind of, even the shelves, shelves, some shelves are empty. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And that's in port cities, you know, like in Houston and in L.A. or in like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, they, those are the places where it's really affecting. Like, Middle America still has, you know, I don't think that's really a, a problem yet. Oh, good. But I know that the prices are going up, but it's those cities that should have no issues are the ones that are, that they're in, you know, putting that pressure on. I saw, I saw uh, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, on Tucker Carlson's show, <laughs> Blazing Hogs, says, suckle, suckle. <laughs> Gross, man. Uh, Ron DeSantis was saying, oh, we've stepped up. Our guys are, our ports, you know, because over in Florida, they have ports too. They're busy. Mm-hmm. They're, they've been going 24 hours shifts. Um, I guess Biden made the people over here do 24-hour shifts or something like that. I don't know if shift is the right thing, but, but they're running 24 hours a day, and they're busy, and he, and, uh, DeSantis is telling people, hey, come over to Florida instead of yeah. Los Angeles or whatever. I don't know how you're going to do that. Maybe through the Panama Canal? <laughs> I don't know my stuff. But is he, I wonder if that's true. If he's really, it just takes some manhood and some competence and people not shutting down to, for us to be functioning. You know what I mean? I wonder if it's just yeah, that. I, yeah, I think, I think that's a big part of it. I think it's just people not being like up for the task yeah like i don't think i don't think Buttigieg was ever like you know anything that i don't think he understands what's even happening you know i don't think he understands how yeah. to fix it i think he's, he's just like 
Uh, I was the guy. I like trains. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why you got your job. That's huh? right. Like train. Pete, okay. Pete's boot edge edge for the for the lay person is the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana. He ran for president. You know, he ran against other Democrats for president as a radical homosexual. He's he pretends to be a Christian. He's so called married to a male. He showed a a baby picture of him with his so called husband and a and a baby that somebody had for them, pretending that that's their new son. And now he's he's the Secretary of Transportation. He's Secretary of the Depart DOT, Department of Transportation. And he's taking uh what is that thing called? Pat paternity leave. That's yeah. you know, maternity leave after you know, they have women working now. And <laughs> women when they after they have a baby, they take some time to recover. And that's called maternity leave. And employers are forced to pay them to not work. Women. Psh, get them out of here. But and now they're doing paternity leave. I criticized some liberal, I mean, some conservative woman who was defending paternity leave. I don't think that that seems to, doesn't seem appropriate. But yeah, he's, he's taking the time off at a time when we have a supply chain crisis. And I don't think he named anybody to be acting secretary and, of mean, transportation. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing in the first place, so it's like, yeah, might as well not be there. And right. We, it was, we, before he even left, our, it was already in, in a huge, pro it was worse while he was there. Yeah, like, it's probably, probably gotten so. better since he's been off paternity leave. Yeah, um, Gaukus, completely unqualified. Gaukus O four twenty two says yes. They're rerouting to Florida and other East Coast ports because we're open and we're not commies, so we don't have mask and fake vax mandates. I disavow that statement, but right on, buddy. <laughs> 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 well, thank you, Bobby. It's good to hear from you. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, have take a good care. Day. You as well. Guys, we are over, it's at 10, 12 right now. We are over the top of the hour, but I have a song to share with you. And I think I have to preemptively disavow this track too. This is entitled Only by OK. Hope you like it, uh, you musical Philistines. It's only 90 seconds long, so we'll be right back. I think it's only 90 seconds long. And uh, it's from the 2008 album Huggable Dust on Absolutely Kosher Records by OK, which is basically Marty Anderson. Enjoy or don't. Grin and bear it, you musical Philistines. I don't think I'll be able to talk you through it, but, uh, but press mute, cover your ears, but I think you might like it. I actually kind of like it, I just don't like the... It's kind of a love song, and I don't like those. But I still like the song in, in spite of myself. Enjoy. I'll be right back for the rest of Hour 2. Hang tight. I'm going to give this a shot here. Here you go. I want you to know that you're my only I want you to know that you're my life. I want you to know you don't got to be lonely. I want you to know it's all right. And though some days are so long, and though some things turn out wrong, but oh, that don't change where I belong, my love. No, that don't change at all. I want you to know that you're my only. I want you to know that you're my life. I want you to know you don't got to be lonely. I want you to know it's all right. I want you to know it's all right. This song was recorded on a Samsung smart fridge, says Nolan Richardson. What do you mean? I see the evil of that picture, says Louis Bootsy. I like their artwork, says Misty8967. Hake's getting a beta back stretch break. Yep. Does Hake play music so he can stretch his legs? Asks Berlin. 90 seconds in hell. 
Anyway, uh, uh, who needs music anyway? Yeah, well, thank you guys for putting with that. It was a nice song, wasn't it kind of nice? I think so. Um, yeah, I took a, a bit, you know, I've been taking walks a lot for the past, like, year or two because of my beta back. I sing along at the campfire. Well, I actually jogged a little bit, too. Jogged and even, you could even call it running at one point for a little bit. Uh, so that's cool. For the first time. Well, the reason I did it is because after playing soccer for the first time in, like, years on Sunday, I was sore and I'm like, oh, you know what? I better move my legs, get the, get that, what is that, lactic acid or whatever? What is it that makes you sore? Get that stuff out of there. Keep moving, moving them around, so I'm less likely to just s- stiffen up or seize up and injure myself or pull something again, right? Because I basically almost injured myself. If maybe I did injure myself a bit, playing soccer, pulling my Achilles tendon, which can be kind of iffy. You don't want to do that, and wrenching my back, which you also you don't want to do that. Fortunately, my knees are fine. I'm not one of those beta knee people, at least not yet. Hopefully. I don't do that, but I knocked on whatever this thing is. Uh, particle board. And so I ran a little bit. What a mess. Strong abs, hey, help the back, yeah. Get a little exercise in. Anyway, um, that's cool. But I might have run so hard that I got even more sore, who knows. (laughs) Got to keep active. Use it or lose it. Am I right? Yes, I'm right. Hey, well, don't say that. I don't want to say that. Um, Madi likes that song. Right on. Hake cried when he gets kicked in the shin guards. <laughs> I didn't wear. I did not wear shin guards, but I wore long those long socks that cover the shin guards. Uh, it was a friendly pickup game. I foul, but I don't get fouled. <laughs> Because I'm a cross-country runner trying to play, uh, s- soccer. Or a cross-country runner trying to play basketball and I, like, push people, and I don't know. I don't know you couldn't do that. <laughs> you know, sloppy people are dangerous to play around. And I'm one of those sloppy people who don't really know what, the, what he's doing. And so, watch out. Watch out. But, yeah. Hake never cries. Indeed, I don't. Anyway, uh, I wanted to tell you about... Um, man. Let me scroll back down here. Crazy storms coming in, by the way. There is this fake racism story put out. You know how Apple News is trying to, trying to tell you what's going on in the world or whatever? Trying to tell you what's going on in the world? And they, it's basically a, a, uh, It's basically propaganda, you know, all these corporate media companies, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Google, which is the same thing as YouTube, um, Apple, uh, Yahoo, bunch of liberals trying to brainwash you into this stuff. So they just put out this ProPublica article. ProPublica, I think of as a far left liberal thing, and they tell this story. Three children attacked a black woman. A sheriff's deputy arrived and beat her more. Doesn't that sound like a clickbaity article? Because a sheriff's deputy arrives and beats her more after three children attack a black woman tells you that you're not getting the whole story. This is in Louisiana's Jefferson Parish. Black residents have long accused the sheriff's office of targeting them. Give me a break. Uh... Which, there's a new video that shows a deputy slamming a black woman, and they capitalize black, because they're kissing up to the blacks. A black woman's head into the ground, and it raises more questions. I don't have the video for you, but they're investigating this deputy who's accused of holding a black woman by her hair and slamming her head repeatedly into the pavement. With such force that uh, a witness to the incident, which took place uh, last month, September 20th, said it ripped... Several of Chantel Arnold's braids from her scalp. Were they her own braids or were they weave braids? I don't know. 
Uh, 14 second video of it. New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans for the late, for the uh, non New Orleans person. Black residents have accused the sheriff's office of targeting them. It was the second time in that hour that Arnold had been assaulted. By the time deputies arrived, she had already fended off an attack by some local boys. Probably black, is my guess. Probably black. Otherwise, they would have said local white boys. Am I right? Or Asian boys. <laughs> or anyway. This 34-year-old Chantel Arnold. The first time being identified, she told the news organizations she needed the police's protection, but protection is not what she got. So the de- sheriff's deputy is seen holding the wrist of, this wo- wrist of this woman who's lying on her back on the sidewalk, dragging, appears to be dragging her along the pavement. He grabs her arm with the other hand and jerks her upward, lifting her body off the ground, and then they disappear behind a, behind a parked vehicle. They're describing the situation. Anyway... They, uh, they don't really give you the context. They don't give you the context. Why were these black boys attacking her? <laughs> Presumably black, right? I think we would have found out if it was somebody else. But they are, they are complaining about stark racial disparities in shootings by deputies and systemic problems with transparency and accountability. Sounds like the typical government organization. Problems with, or any organization, really, Problems with transparency and accountability? Give me a break. Where's the pro- There's a lot of problems with transparency and accountability among the blacks. That's why I wear this t-shirt. Facts versus truth. It is a fact that blacks are disproportionately killed by cops, right? Well, compared to their population. I think there's more than twice as many whites every year get killed by cops, but there's five times as many whites. Well, that's because if you compare, like, the felony, felony rate, I think blacks are, like, four times as likely to be felons, six times as likely to commit murders, eight times, nine times, according to some research in, uh, or s- numbers put out by, in San Francisco, eight, nine times as likely to resist arrest, blacks are. So it sounds like what they're getting is about consistent with uh, what the average person gets. And people say that cops are more and more violating people's rights. And I believe it. There's a, there's a caller from uh, Oklahoma or Texas who's called into my show and said, I've been slapped around and beaten around, beaten by cops before. And this guy's a white guy. Because he used to be a, 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 a hooligan. An out of control, druggy use, drug using, maybe even drug dealing type of a guy. And then I've been stopped for no reason. More than seventy percent of this uh, in this area of the people deputies shot during the last eight years were black, and they use capitalized black, of course. More than double the parish's black population. Well, that's about right, because you're overrepresented among your criminals by more than double your population. More than, well, more than double, maybe triple. Four times when you compare it to the general population nationwide. Twelve of the 16 people who died after being shot or restrained by deputies during that time were black men. And they're using the term man very loosely. I'll let you know. Mostly justified. It is a fact that blacks are disproportionately shot by the cops, but it is the truth that it's mostly justified. That's why I say facts versus truth. Because people come in, the mainstream media comes in with all their facts, and they pretend Trump, Donald J. Trump is a liar. But the truth is, Trump is telling the truth, and that's why they hate him. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crimes, they're rapists, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. That was the truth. There were very fine people on both sides of the argument. Um, after the Charlottesville situation. What about the alt-left? They were, at, they were some doing some nasty things. He called them the alt-left. Antifa and Black Lives Matter. The scumbags attacking the whites at the Charlottesville thing. Most of the people who were the aggressors in Charlottesville, by and large, were Antifa and Black Lives Matter, including the case in which uh, the guy drove into the crowd. He was, 
He was not the aggressor. He was, he was re- retaliating. Uh, I mean, maybe he was total self-defense. Who knows? Some of you guys say, oh, this guy waved a gun at him and sh- pointed a gun at him, this Antifa professor. I've played that clip for you before. To me, it's in, up in the air. I don't know. But Antifa were beating his car. Black Lives Matter, beating his car. That's the truth. Trump told the truth consistently throughout his presidency. And every time it was a big outrage, they were outraged at the truth being told. They, so them documenting all of his lies. Trump is an actor, says <laughs> Slam for Free Poetry. Ah, uh, whatever. But he told the truth. That's why he's hated. And all this reaction, to this day, is an overreaction to Trump. To this day! I was listening to this person being interviewed on uh, this podcast by John Friend, who is like this guy who thinks that he's, he thinks Hitler was a good Christian man. And he pointed out how the reaction of the world right now, even to this day, is a reaction against Hitler or whatever he was doing. Well, well, so, same thing with Trump. The reaction to this day is against Trump. It's against Trump. So You know we've been fighting 400 and still fighting to this day. That's right. That's right. ACLU, the usual suspects. ACLU of Louisiana is involved in this story of this woman who lost her... Was it her weave who came out? that came out or her actual braids? That would hurt, man, <laughs> if it was actually, I mean, I don't know what it's like to lose a weave. Usually it's, I don't know, I don't know. You, it seems like they come off pretty easily when you, if you ever watch that degenerate TV show, uh, Jerry Springer, where they're fighting and the wig comes off. Is that considered a weave? I'm not sure. Um, ACLU of Louisiana called on federal prosecutors Call in the feds, the corrupt feds, to launch an investigation into this sheriff's office of this area close to uh, New Orleans. What a mess. The incident started, it was in the middle of the day, 2 p.m. on September 20th. She was supposedly attacked by three boys walking down the street near her family's trailer home. She's four foot eight, 100 pounds. Her left eye missing from a car accident years earlier. Really? Oh, okay. I'll have to... Should I screenshot this so you guys see the picture of her? Shared by ProPublica. That's why her hair is down and covering her face on one side. Wow, she lost an eye in a car accident. And you know this driving while black thing? Uh, it's It's fake news. The ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union... Oh, I have to reconnect to this. The American Civil Liberties Union under that evil woman, and I've told you about this before, uh, Michelle Alexander, the author of The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness, says that uh, she used to work for the ACLU, pushing the driving while black thing. ACLU are commies. They don't belong in America at all. Oh, no, I put it into the wrong part. Let me see. Copy. The Hake Report. Paste. Okay. Screenshots in the folder of this woman who lost her eye. Four foot eight, hundred pounds. I don't know. She looks maybe bigger than that, but... Okay. Four foot eight's pretty short. Left eye missing from a car accident years earlier. She made an easy target for the neighborhood bullies. Neighborhood bullies is what they call these black kids who beat up people. Unsuspecting and, and weak people. She's kind of cute, says Chat Monkey. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. Look at her. She's kind of cute. Is, are those Taco Bell bells on her shirt? Isn't that nice? But I don't like this victimhood stuff that she's pulling. I don't know. I don't know if she did anything wrong. I don't know what if the cop, cop was wrong for doing slamming her on the ground. During the attack, which lasted several minutes, uh and was captured on cell phone video, the boys slammed Arnold to the ground and beat her while a crowd watched and laughed. Sounds like an evil town. I bet you the crowd is mostly black, if not all. She tried to defend herself with a stick, visible in the video. Assault ended after 71-year-old Lionel Gray 
whom Arnold considers her stepfather, chased the boys away. 71-year-old man. Well, JLP could do that, too, because he's tough. Probably beat all of us up in the office. Uh, Disheveled and covered in dirt, she stumbled down the road toward her home when an unidentified sheriff's deputy rolled up beside her in his patrol car. In transcript of her interview with an internal affairs investigator, she says, I'm on my way home. I ain't making it all the way to the block. The police come out of nowhere, swarming, get me like, come here. I'm like, what's going on? I just got beat up by two children, she said. What y'all doing? She says the deputy slammed her, demanded she stop and talk to him. She told him that she'd just been assaulted and wanted to go home. She continued walking. Pfft. What a mess. Anyway, that's that. That's enough of that. Maybe I'll get, well, I don't know if I want to show the video if it's that nasty. But it's a bunch of phoniness. Phoniness. She lost her eye in a car accident. I've shown you uh, stats from the National Tr- Highway Transportation something something Association. It's national statistics. Showed, according to Dr. John R. Lott Jr. in the New York Post debunking the phony Ferguson report, that this driving while black thing is dumb. Blacks die in car accidents at like twice their rate of car owners. And those who die in the accidents are more likely, those blacks who die in car accidents are more likely than others to have had prior moving violations. That indicates that they are more, uh, more out of control it's in terms of being um, safe drivers. Poor woman had it rough. I can tell, says Gary Duarte. Yeah. But I wonder whose fault that, uh, that car accident was, you know? Mess. A big mess. So there's another fake racism story for you. <laughs> I chuckle, but it's, it's a, who knows, maybe that cop was wrong, whatever. Anyway, a um, <laughs> couple of funny stories. Do you hear that Andy Warhol fakes are going around? Hake loves the blacks. That's right, Tim Scott. Andy Warhol, you guys know Andy Warhol? He's that 60s or whatever artist. He made a bunch of Campbell's soup can paintings and what's her name? That woman who used to be supposedly pretty and she died or whatever. Bunch of pictures of her, maybe pictures of Elvis, just a bunch of pop art. Well, there's a thousand Andy Warhol artworks on sale for just $250. A piece, each. Nice, huh? Except only one of them is real, the rest of her are fakes, and you'll never know which one is real. Isn't that catchy? Oh, he was gay? Yikes. Uh, and so the art experts are not pleased. But would Warhol be for it? It seems like he would be for that. He was into the stunts like that. And this, like, art is not about beauty anymore, it's just about ideas. Marilyn Monroe, that's right. I think is some of that art was kind of cool. It definitely wasn't like amazing and classical, but it was clever. It was catchy. It was uh, somewhat appealing, right? Somewhat, a little bit. Would he be amused though? Much to think about. Not much to think about. He was a hipster before that was a thing, says Tim Scott. <laughs> I know. What a mess. I like some pop art, says Radulaz, more than some, better than some modern art today. I, I took art in uh, college because I was told you have to go to college, you have more chances at a degree, and, uh, and what? <laughs> it's just good to do. <clears throat> Freshman year of high school, I was going to go to the military or become a cop or something like that. All of his art is forgery, and that was the point, says Thomas Gorby. Yeah. But, uh, they're a bunch of liberals. And a lot of people, a lot of women, a lot of people were kind of too self-important and too into, like, this... They were, they would bash Thomas Kincaid, who's this... was, he died now 
was this Christian painter, the painter of light, and he would paint these supposedly beautiful pictures. They all pretty much looked the same, but it had a lot of greenery, it had maybe a house, and, it, and he was a Christian. And he would sell blankets, mugs, all kinds of stuff, just, just selling stuff, making major money. And they would bash him. I think his son became, became something, some artist or something. But it was interesting, I guess. I'm, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I did it, I guess. I had fun. I liked some of the people that I met. It turned out to be a bunch of liberals, though. And, yeah, that's about, that's about all I can say about it. Anyway, uh, Hitler was an artist, says Misty8976. Yeah, everybody's an artist. That's what I heard. Everybody's an artist. Hunter Biden. Honestly, I like Hunter Biden's stuff. I've seen it. I like it. <laughs> Granted, it's not, it's not beautiful and amazing, but it's clever, it's, it's cute, it's poppy. And so, on that note, I, I respect it, and I respect the hustle. The painter that critics hated but America loved. <laughs> I didn't really love Thomas Kincaid. My mother had a Thomas Kincaid blanket that I didn't even know it was Thomas Kincaid. I just thought it was some random blanket that had a house on it. Pathetic. Why did Trovo ban you again? I don't know, because it's, it's silly. Um, speaking of that, one, one last little silly story. Lego. <laughs> I la- I'm sharing this story just because it was, it made me chuckle how clever the ladies, speaking of women, at the skim are. Uh, this, le- what's a real blockbuster? This Lego bust. This is the, the skim. The far left female run outlet, the skim. They're so witty. And then I'll tell you about Facebook. They're, they're going after Facebook, but for the wrong reasons. This week, police broke apart a Lego trafficking operation. Seattle police said a shop owner was reselling 101 stolen Lego sets worth thousands of dollars. Lego's evil. I say that because they're promoting the gender, non-gender stuff, right? Prosecutors charged him with trafficking stolen property. I wonder if this shop owner was Asian. I'm just profiling here. Just stereotyping here. Experts pieced together that Lego was trafficking. Lego trafficking had become a major concern. Now the store owner reportedly faces up to 10 years in prison or a $2,000 fine or maybe both. Sounds more, sta- more painful than stepping on a Lego, they said. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Stepping on a Lego is uh, pretty painful. Pretty painful stuff. <laughs> anyway. That's that for that. I wanted to tell you guys about Facebook. They're, you know how they're pushing this attack on your free speech. And by the way, if you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook. FYI. (laughs) I guess I'm acting like a know-it-all, as if you guys don't know this. But I told you in Hake News at the end of hour one, I think, of the Jesse Lee Peterson show today. Leaked Facebook documents reveal that the problem of hate speech on the platform, Facebook, is bigger than it discloses. And they call it the Facebook Papers, leaked to Congress by a former employee, a traitor. (laughs) Is it a traitor to Facebook if you're leaking to Congress, another bunch of evil people? I think it is a traitor. It's a traitor to America, really. If you're gonna leak stuff, leak stuff to Project Veritas, and leak stuff that shows that Facebook are corrupt people who are rigging elections. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Totally faking. I take that back. I disavow that statement. (laughs) It slipped out. CNN says, a series of news stories is dubbed the Facebook Papers. Based on thousands of internal company documents, reveals how the platform has been used to sow political discord and extremism across the world, facilitate human trafficking, push hate speech and misinformation. See, they're just lumping all this stuff together. Hate speech does not exist. Facebook's so corny. Yeah, I know. Uh, They say, 
uh, Facebook was used to organize events like the January 6th insurrection. It was not an insurrection. Uh, fake news. Commie Nonsense Network. To this day, they're calling it an insurrection. To this day! Ridiculous. Ridiculous. And I don't see them getting shut down. That's, that's misinformation. So outrageous. The documents also reveal Facebook leaders somehow knew, sometimes knew to, to some extent the damage being caused by users, but they did nothing. <laughs> well, they did too much, honestly. They've, they've shut me down. They shut JLP down. He preaches just pure love and truth. What a mess. Um, Facebook rep, uh, papers represents another crisis for the social media giant. Already under scrutiny from the Senate. And some with the company's own ranks. See, because the, the, uh, the companies are infiltrated by a bunch of liberals. Who, you saw it with Netflix. And Netflix themselves are far left liberals. Who hate what's right. Their CEO and his wife, one of the CEOs I think, and his wife, donated to George Gascon's campaign. Million dollars. Between the two of them, practically. Give me a break. Uh, Social media giant already under scrutiny from the Senate and some on the company's own ranks. It's being published by a consortium of 17 U.S. news organizations. Those are not U.S. news organizations. They are anti-U.S. news organizations, including CNN. CNN is part of the Facebook papers thing. So they're tooting their own horn. The documents were included in disclosures made to the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, and provided to Congress in a redacted form by the Facebook whistleblower Francis Haugen's legal counsel. Francis Haugen is not a whistleblower. She's a leaker. And she is mainstream. (laughs) Karen Williams, don't tell me that. What the heck? Why are you telling me that? Morning Brew talked about this. The far left female run out. Let the skim reported on this. By the way, Facebook is doing fine, though, in the midst of this. Their revenue, quarter th- third quarter revenue, according to the Morning Brew, which is a news outlet, believe it or not, said that they increased 35% from last year. Wow. 3.5. I mean, everybody's. Wow, that's a lot. From last year. Last year was huge for Facebook, I would think. Because they were propping up the Black Lives Matter stuff. With the communist shutdowns, people were doing nothing, sitting around on Facebook all day. So they're still doing fine? Is that Mark Zuckerberg? 3.58 billion people worldwide use Facebook's apps. Including IG, I will tell you. And Messenger. And WhatsApp. WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, am I right? People use WhatsApp, I think, in South Africa. And it's for survival, really. South African farmers. If you're a farmer in South Africa, I was listening to this report from a huge, huge um, channel on YouTube called Serpenza. And this is this South African guy who, who left the country, gave up on the country. And moved to China. But with a few months ago, the South African mess was a real mess. And it was out in the open. They were messing up the supply chain stuff over there. Burning stuff. Looting and burning and grabbing food. Accumulating a bunch of food. People shut down their factories because they're just going to get destroyed. And there were no trucks to go and pick up the stuff. It's a big mess. Uh... I wonder if that was the Chinese, the Chicoms, but I don't know. It was the communists here in this country. Our communist media encouraged getting, taking out apartheid, which is nothing, not even close to as evil as what they have going on now, I, apparently. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's my impression. Why don't I get off on that subject? But yeah, WhatsApp. They're using WhatsApp to survive. So they can communicate with one another. It's just messaging. Is it just messaging? Yeah, it basically is. Uh, 
anyway, this uh, agitated CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, labeled this uh, hit piece, this PR nightmare, a coordinated effort to selectively use leaked documents to paint a false picture of our company, he said on the earnings call. <laughs> and they're doing fine. They're making, they in, their revenue increased 35%. What a mess. Apple has privacy updates that are hurting their ad vis- visibility, but they're doing fine. The thousands of page- pages of leaked research. And uh, so it's, they're, it's, they're attacking Facebook. Zuckerberg's getting uh, slammed by, well, overtaken by rivals like TikTok, which Trump wanted to shut down, Chinese TikTok, in engaging younger users. So the company is going to be retooling, and he wants to go in the metaverse. Remember the metaverse? Everybody, all, every idiot wearing a, a uh, I say it, but maybe I'll be doing it one day. I hope not. But, but every idiot wearing those VR headsets, the Oculus VR thing, and meeting together with your mother across the country or whatever. What a mess. Francis Haugen, give me a break. What a joke. So the skim says, Facebook worked not very hard to stop the spread of misinformation. And I heard there was an, I heard in an article or a tweet that the Facebook employees from Michael Tracy, actually, liberal reporter, independent reporter, Facebook employees, they were, they were all celebrating that they had successfully stopped the misinformation after the 2020 election. But they weren't celebrating they stopped misinformation. They were celebrating that they stopped Trump. Give me a break. Phony people. Anyway. They tracked 40,000 false news incidents per hour. They push fake news incidents. Black Lives Matter is fake news. The Women's March is fake news. The Me Too movement is fake news. Anyway. Uh, My beta back is getting tired. Let me get to some Super Chats, guys. Let me get to some Super Chats. Big Bump says, Warhol could have been part of the CIA's modern art movement. Interesting, huh? Very convenient that he was propped up during the era. Was he propped up even while he was alive? Probably so. Probably so. Uh, Baba Gotu guy gave a super chat and said, I possess a book called Drawing from the Right Side of the Brain. You can teach anybody to be an artist. The techniques really work. Yeah, I knew a music teacher, a piano teacher, who said, well, actually he's singing, taught, taught singing too. He could teach anybody to sing. Anybody? Anybody. Teach anybody to sing. Isn't that cool? I think that's cool. But it just, I think that it's, it's valid. Um, there was a chat, a tip from uh, Brandon M. News tip, really. Biggest news story of the day over there on Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com slash at the Hague Report. He says, biggest news story of the day, Ohio canceled its membership in the National School Board Association. Is that true? What's that mean? Is the National School Board Association a bunch of liberals attacking the Christians? I wonder. But I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Thank you for the heads up. Let me just double check the Super Chats here. Uh, (laughs) Asmodor gave a Super Chat and, and asks, How long before Dad's on duty... Get clacked on hard. I don't know. That's a reference to that what Joe from Phoenix, Arizona was calling in and talking about. The dads on duty mess. Those black fathers. Some of them pretty fat. They're in the south. Louisiana. The south. And uh, they have their t-shirts. It says dads on duty. And they're showing up in the schools. Because the black kids are out of control fighting all the time. So the fathers are coming in and acting like they're going to keep some control. And their fathers 
So they're going to be end up being too male, too strong, too manly. Anything remotely decent gets attacked. I'm going to talk about how they're going after the, uh, the, uh, anybody who's remotely a conservative hero or heroine. Even the cringiest of cringy people. Like Lauren Boebert. <laughs> Am I wrong for making fun of her? They're going after, including Paul Gosar, everybody. Paul Gosar spoke at uh, AFPAC, right? America First, uh, Political Action Committee or whatever. But right on. Uh, Brandon M. gave a super chat on Odyssey, O-D-Y-S-E-E dot com. Oh, the national, uh, what did he tell me about that before? The National School Board Association called the protesting parents, you know, the parents whose children were staying at home, and then they caught wind of their teachers teaching them dumb, blind CRT stuff, uh, pretending that racism is a real thing, teaching them LGBT madness, all the stuff that I told you about from Daily Mail and all that mess. They called parents protesting that stuff and the transgender madness and rapes on campus from transgenders going into girls... Bathroom. Allegedly. Allegedly. One rape. One alleged rape. A judge said it was pro- it was it can go forward to trial because he seemed it seemed like it was there was no evidence or there was evidence to indicate that it was not consensual. The sex that took place in that bathroom. You may have heard about it on Tucker. I mentioned it before too. They called parents protesting domestic terrorists and wanted Attorney General Merrick Garland. That evil goblin guy whose voice sounds even worse than mine when I'm losing my voice. But I'm, my voice is descending into that Merrick Garland stuff. <laughs> and his voice sounds worse too than, <clears throat> okay, Marty Anderson, whom I play. That Merrick Garland, the evil guy whom Barack Obama wanted for Supreme Court justice. But Sleepy Joe put him for the, the attorney general, the head of the DOJ, the top cop in America. Crim- corrupt, corrupt. Not a Christian, by the way. Definitely not. Merrick Garland. Not honest. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so good for Ohio canceling its membership in the National School Board Association. Right on. Did I tell you guys, you know, this caller, one last super chat, guys. Did I tell you, oh, I have another super chat, too. Did I tell you, um, well, I'll eat. What Asmodorus told me, Ali was drafted, oh, I think I did tell you this. Oh, Muhammad Ali was drafted in 1967. Segregation was outlawed years before then. That's true. Single mom doing her best. Gave a super chat. <laughs> She's not a, she compared OK to Merrick Garland. OK is the music that I play, and I'm about to play it in a minute here. <clears throat> Why must you call us a musical Philistine for not liking your mostly, there I go, I'm, I'm, I'm scratching. I need water. Mostly terrible music. <laughs> Wouldn't the music have to be at least somewhat tolerable for me to be considered a Philistine for not liking it? Well, single mom doing her best. Uh, I'm the boss here of this show, and I decide what's good or bad music. Am I right? (laughs) I decide what's good music. And so I call you guys Philistines, even though, in to me it's kind of funny, because I'm the musical Philistine. I didn't even know that Kid Cudi was not Kid Cootie. Maybe because I hang around a bunch of Mexicans, so I feel like I've heard Kid Cootie before. And Mexicans would pronounce it Kid Cootie because it's spelled Cootie. If you pronounce it the Mexican way. So, uh, I mean, not that Kid Cudi is, it, or Cootie. I like, I prefer Kid Cootie. I'm going to call him Kid Cootie. Not that that would, and not that non-Philistines would like him. But, uh, I don't know. I think of it as funny because a lot of you guys know a lot of, lot of music. And I only know Christian music from uh, 2006 and earlier. To 1980s. <laughs> anyway. 
in light of that, guys, we've had a fun show. Fun for me, anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. I have to share you. I have to share with you. Speaking of speaking Mexican, share you. I have to share with you a track entitled Tragedy by OK, Marty Anderson. Not to be confused with Merrick Garland, who has a horrible voice, an evil voice. He's an evil person. Uh, I almost consider Marty Anderson. No, I shouldn't do that. I'm not going to do that. I was going to say I almost consider him an honorary Christian because he suffered with that Crohn's disease. And he discovered some stuff that's like real. I, or it seemed like he was, had discovered stuff about suffering and, and uh, being content and stuff like that. That was cool. But he's doing these love songs, whatever, in 08. Here, this is from Huggable Dust, the 2008 album on Absolutely Kosher Records. Enjoy Tragedy. And to me, I don't think this is such a tragedy. By OK. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll talk you through it, though. Bye, guys. Nice, right? This Marty fella has some talent. Thank you, Snot Boogie. You're not a Philistine. This boy, he really wanted this girl. song. <laughs> he said this world is mine. Interesting, huh? But this boy, he really wanted this girl. But he did have the time. She That's in order. She wanted into his world, but he said, This world is mine. are in my prayers. Jasper Jones is unsub- unsubbing. <laughs> it's not too bad, kind of like a minor headache. Of course, the woman. 
The woman calling it tragedy. I don't have a Spotify, or I, I don't know if I do. I don't use it. Another mediocre show says Lights Out. Well, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you tomorrow, hopefully. Take care.